there's nothing worse than when you're looking for a paid receipt and you can't find it. But the system I've built inside of Evernote will help you find what you need when you need it. Also today, the pros and cons of keeping a separate system for work and your personal life. And some information about the upcoming version 11 inside of Evernote. I'm Dave Edwards, a certified Evernote expert. Need some help setting up your Evernote system? So it's not just a pile of notes and notebooks? I coach people like you, one-on-one -on -one coaching. Find out more at daveedwardsmedia.com slash Evernote. Okay, before we get into today's content, I want to address a, a couple of uh, comments that were uh, posted in response to my video last week. If you didn't see it, and I'll post the link here, um, I uh, was somewhat critical about Evernote's rollout um, of its enterprise accounts and the changeover from Teams uh, to enterprise. And I got uh, several uh, messages from folks saying, why don't you do an, uh, a segment on what are the alternatives to Evernote for those of us who want to leave? Look, I'm not encouraging anybody to leave. Uh, I like the Evernote product. That's why I keep posting these videos. I use it every day. I use it multiple times a day. I'd be lost without it. And I have tried other systems, and I haven't found anything that equals uh, the kind of robust nature of Evernote. Uh, and so just because I've been critical of the way Evernote is rolling this out, and, and more specifically how they're communicating uh, this information with others, I, I never suggested that I'm leaving Evernote or even recommending other people. Uh, my message uh, was really more to the bending spoons folks saying, hey, you know, you got to communicate this stuff better. You're doing some really cool things, uh, but, uh, you know, communication is key. Okay, uh, uh, enough of that. So, so let me uh, move on here. I've talked quite a bit on this channel about how powerful the Evernote search engine is and how you can find anything inside of Evernote with just a couple of clicks. And that is true. But if you aren't getting things into Evernote, into your system, well, then all the searching in the world is not going to help you. So today I want to give you some simple tips and tricks that will help you get things into Evernote and find them again. First of all, I don't input every little receipt I receive, you know, receive, uh, receipts from fast food places. Uh, I typically don't uh, ever need them again, so why bother putting them into Evernote? But important receipts are important to keep. So what I like to do is I create a stack called receipts. Now within that stack, I have a notebook for every year that uh, I want to keep track of. So I would have a notebook inside this stack for receipts hyphen 2026. And I would have a notebook for receipts hyphen 2025. Then I put the important receipts into this stack. Now, if you uh, are keeping track of receipts, you know, for work separately from personal receipts, you might want to create a separate stack for each of those. But frankly, most of the receipts I get are digital and they're usually emailed to me. So it's very easy to get a receipt into the notebook. On the rare occasion that I get a uh, paper uh, receipt, uh, something that I want to keep, you know, my Auto Mechanic gives me a printout every time I get service. I want to keep that. So I'll scan that using my scanner, but I always try to use my phone. Uh, you have two options there. You can use the camera attachment built inside of Evernote. Uh, here's a sample of something I quickly scanned here. Uh, you can also use the Scannable app. Either one works. Uh, by the way, you see that auto button here? If you use the auto function on the Evernote camera, it's going to give you the whole receipt. Uh, and then all you have to do is click the button. You can add multiple pages uh, if you want to do that. And then everything goes into the appropriate notebook. I also have an import folder on my desktop. That comes in handy when 
things are uh, emailed to me and I or I have to use my scanner rather uh, you know like for longer documents I can put it in the import folder and whatever I put into that folder is automatically uh, put into Evernote. Another important trick is uh, labeling those receipts. So let's say I get a receipt from Evernote. Now, this is a fake one obviously but the title is important. Uh, I before I put it into my receipts notebook I change it so it's the name of where it comes from the fact that it's a receipt as opposed to an invoice then I use a very simple date structure the year the month the day now this note when it resides into this folder is not only easy because it will list these chronologically because every everything marked Evernote receipt will be grouped together and then it will be chronological by the uh, numeric sequence that I uh, give it here. Obviously if this was an invoice uh, it would say Evernote invoice or you know your utility it would say in my case uh, Wisconsin Energy uh, invoice and then it would be the the date here. The key is consistency. Uh, this also helps when you want to search something because you know how you have filed all of the important receipts that you want to have. Now, this is going to take a couple of minutes to set up, but trust me, it's a good feeling the next time you're looking for a receipt. Now on to three quick viewer questions. The first one is something I've been asked a lot, and that is various versions of what can you tell us about version 11? <laughs> well, the answer, unfortunately, is not much. Uh, as an Evernote expert, I've been on several calls where they've shared uh, screenshots, uh, where they've uh, given us uh, some ideas of some of the features they're building into the new version. Unfortunately, we've been sworn to secrecy, so I can't say very much. And, and to be honest with you, I don't think they're done with it yet. I think they're in the testing mode and seeing what they can put all, all into version 11. I, I will say that it's coming. It's just around the corner. And uh, an observation, uh, while they were making this presentation to us that I thought about, I thought about how some people are going to be really excited about some of the new things that they're talking about. Evernote's been on a roll with really making the app better and better or since Bending Spoons uh, acquired the company. But I was also thinking uh, that some people will complain and they'll say, oh, I don't like the new version. I like the old version better. I like the way it looks. I don't need this functionality. It costs too much money. I mean, all those kinds of things are going to come up. But uh, just hang on. It's going to be out soon and, um, you know, we'll play with it. I will post lots of videos about uh, what version 11 is as soon as we are cleared to do so. Okay, question number two. Phil asked, should I have two Evernote accounts, one for work and one for personal things? Well, Phil, because the search feature is so powerful, I personally always want to access everything when I need it without worrying about which account I'm in. So I have and have always had one Evernote account for personal and business. Okay, so, you know, actually that's not true. I do have per, uh, two Evernote accounts. One is for my personal items and for my business-related items, and then I have a second account, which is my, my demo account, which is what I, I feature here uh, on this channel because obviously I can't share a lot of personal stuff that I keep in Evernote. But, but I do have uh, my main account, and that's combining personal and business, and I've always had it this way. Now, as I've told people, the exception in my mind would be if your company doesn't want you to use Evernote on their system, and, and there are some companies who, you know, don't like that, um, or if you're just super concerned about prying eyes, you're going to have to weigh both options. But I, I do think having one account for your personal and your business is probably the best way to go. Then you're not switching back and forth. I even have problems sometimes when I'm in my uh, demo account and working with a client on that. And then, you know, the, the call ends. And then, you know, 20 minutes later, I go to do something and I can't find, oh, wait a minute, I'm in the wrong account. So one account I think is best. And today's final question comes from Giles, who asked if uh, he should keep some files in Evernote and some in Google Drive and wondered how I do it. Well, I guess that depends on how much you have and what you're going to store. As I said just a second ago, 
my default is to have one system for everything. But I, I will admit that I use Dropbox for what I call my deep storage. <laughs> it's where I store, for example, scripts from these videos and scripts from my courses. Uh, I also keep in Dropbox files from my previous jobs. These are things that I don't need right now, but I'm kind of a digital pack rat. I don't really want to lose track of anything. In fact, when I left my last full-time job, about six months later, they were looking for a document. They called me and uh, I went into Dropbox and found it and shared it with them. Uh, you know, I store my photos in iCloud. So for me, it's a, it's a bit of a capacity versus access kind of thing. I hope that helps. Hey, if you have an Evernote-related question, just email me or post a question below. Either way, I'll try to get them in future videos. And once again, if I can help you set up your Evernote system or help you build a productivity system inside of Evernote, I love to do one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, with uh, folks just like you. So you can find out more information about that at daveedwardsmedia.com slash Evernote.